Okay. We're going to start by reading at Mark chapter 6, verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go in the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he gave thanks and broke the, bread, the loaves, and he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls and broke pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was 5,000. It's interesting that at the beginning of chapter 6, Jesus gets thrown out of his hometown by the very people who actually could claim they know him very well because they saw him grow up. He gets, he gets the message though, and he leaves. And what he does is he goes teaching from village to village. And at some point he calls his disciples together and then he sends them out to preach the gospel as well in his name. And at verse 30, the disciples have now returned from being sent out. He says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus wants us to have time away with him. He wants to have time away with his disciples, and it's for a good reason. It's an important dynamic for those of us who follow him, and one that is repeated throughout the Gospels, that Jesus wants to spend time in a quiet place with his disciples, us. So we need to gather that discipline. on the Sea of Galilee, and it's a wonderful image I can still recall like yesterday. And I've got to tell you, the shoreline has a lot of remote coastline to get lost in. But notice, the word still traveled, it traveled like a virus. The people still found out where they were, and here Jesus and his disciples end up feeding 5,000 people with only five loaves and two fish. But before this miracle, they were beside themselves, not knowing where or how to feed the people when Jesus told them to feed them. They were powerless, and they thought about their own ability. What? It's going to take that much wages to do this. But Jesus stays focused. He then dismisses the crowd, and notice here he goes off alone to pray. Another lesson repeated in the gospel for our instruction, that we need to be doing the same thing, finding prayer time alone with God. But while he was away, and just before he returned to the disciples, a second amazing event and miracle occurred, the calling, the calming of the storm, and him walking on the water. At Mark 6.45, it says this, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When Evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake, and he was about to pass them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. And immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. 
they were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves and their hearts were hardened. This passage is for both when we don't see God in our lives during the difficult times during the storm and the self-reliant who have Jesus all figured out, those who think they know him. He saw them struggling and he sees us struggling with the oars and he goes to them walking on the water and the disciples thinking they see a ghost are terrified and cry out in distress and Jesus appears to them and says, take courage, do not be afraid. Then at verse 42, it tells us that they were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. What? They hadn't understood about the loaves and their hearts were hardened? How is this related to what just happened? Now the disciples probably have breadcrumbs and fish smell all over them. Plenty of reminders of what just happened. And it's amazing that I have walked with Jesus for a lifetime now, having truly surrendered to grace and accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and experienced him. And I have the strong tendency to still repeat a problem not easily recognized over and over again. And that's my self-reliance. What was the lesson of the loaves and of the storm? That they were powerless. I'm powerless. There's a lot I'd like to control, but I can't. And they didn't see the connection between one event and the next. They didn't reflect on what they knew. They didn't recall what they just did with the fish and the loaves. That's part of what's important about being with Jesus. Now, I could say they were, no, they were shaken enough to not recall much. That's happened to me, but it shows how our fears can be very strong, how strong those fears are. Causing our failure to see what the Lord has already done in our lives with past challenges. Who of us is afraid of our future? That we have inadequate finances, that we don't get sick, especially in this pandemic. Then we may worry for our family members, not to be easily stated, but those things are all in his hands. My wife likes to remind me, then she says, when I talk like that to her, she says, well, you remember that the next time, Terry. <laughs> we can trust him just as we have to get to where we are right now. We trusted him and where are we right now? Look at our lives. Jesus doesn't deliver us from struggles so that we can become self-reliant and repeat the source of original sin of humanity. Instead, he leads us to a place of realizing our powerlessness in life and his desire to meet every future need in the same way, by relying on him and his power. And to have faith that he is present with us, even if we can't sense it at all times, not just the good times. So what is it today that we as followers of Jesus can do to avoid falling into the trap of pride and self-reliance, and maybe even unbelief, Avoid being too distressed in trials presently or to come when we see our powerlessness. We remember him and what he has already done in our lives. We can easily look back at a time we thought God had abandoned us or we thought he was absent, but realize now that he was indeed present with us. When we are in those quiet times with Jesus, we can praise him with thanksgiving as we discover. We then find ourselves with a wonderful testimony. We start reflecting on all the wonderful things he's done for us. And you know what? We now have a witness. We have something we can share. We can go and proclaim. We can be encouraged by remembering what he has done for us already. And most importantly, what he has done for us at the cross that he died for our sins and rose again, that we might have life and life more abundantly. An eternal future with him in his love and care. And actually, we have that even right now. I'm encouraging myself here with this message, and I did while preparing, as well as each of us, I want to encourage, to, protect, to practice the reality that there will never be a time where we will not need his grace in all things, we should immediately ask for the Holy Spirit to help us with each new challenge in life, just as we did when we first cried out to God, let it be our 
default position to cry out to and rely on him and his power when frightened by remembering his word and what we have already lived we can be encouraged and not be afraid our memory is indeed a blessing from god we don't have to go looking for a new miracle to trust his care today we have the testimony of his work and word operating in the memory of our past to encourage us today someday when we look back on today or, or, or looking down from eternity even we will see today's miracle of god's presence and provision just like we can look back now these words shall be on your hearts teach them and talk of them when you sit and when you lie down and when you rise up and you will be blessed when you remember what the lord has done for you let me just a short prayer as we close Thank you, Lord, for what you have already done in our lives. Help us to remember your work. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.